Welcome to the Joy School Podcast. Real talk about what it takes to create your happiest, healthiest, and most dynamic life. And now, here's your host, transformational life coach, happiness strategist, and best-selling author, Christy Ling Spencer. Well, hey friends, and welcome to another episode of the show. I am so grateful that you're back with me. And if you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. This is a really special episode because we have a bit of a reunion of sorts, and we're going to be talking about anxiety and how anxiety now, especially with Gen Z and millennials, but also Gen X, and really across the board, is at its highest level ever. And that's understandable with everything that's going on in the world and how the world has changed over the last couple of decades and even over just the last few months. It is sometimes a real struggle to manage anxiety, whether it's chronic like I used to struggle with or situational, temporary, or something that you're struggling with on an ongoing basis. This show is for you. And I think most of us have been through struggles with anxiety in some way, shape, or form. And I wrote about this quite a bit in my book, Operation Happiness. I told my story of how I used to struggle with generalized anxiety disorder. It was very chronic in my life until I really dove in and learned about it. And I learned tools and frameworks and techniques to help me manage it and even reduce it to the point where now it just creeps in once in a while. And when it does, I honor it. I recognize it. I'm like, hey, anxiety, I know that's you. (laughs) What is the underlying cause here? And what can we do? How can we work together to make you go away? (laughs) Right? But It is an ongoing thing, and it is a real struggle for so many. And so here's a little backstory on how today's show came about. So years ago, about 10, 11 years ago or so, I did an event at the Four Seasons Hotel in Westlake Village, California. I want to give them a shout out. It's a beautiful resort, and they did such a great job on this event for everybody. And this event was so epic that people are still talking about it like, a decade later, right? And the event was called Love Your Life. And it was a weekend retreat. And I had many speakers there. It was so well received and really transformative for so many. We had about 150 people that attended. And so prior to that event, I was contacted by Lauren Cook, who is now Dr. Lauren Cook, who heard about the event and was very interested in the field of personal development and helping others through all of the things and asked if she could work with me at the event, if she could volunteer. And I didn't have any volunteers for the event at that time, but I knew I needed some help at the door and just in general. And so in exchange for a free ticket, she came and helped out for a couple of days and we got to know each other. And I was so grateful to have her there. And she was such a bright light and she was a wonderful volunteer at the event. I had so many compliments that on, on the work that she did while she was there. And it was just great to have her there. And I remember just thinking, wow, I really think that ambition is going to take her far, right? To have that courage to just reach out to me when she had never met me before and say, this looks like a great event. How can I help you? I just loved it. So we've stayed in touch on social media all this time, and I have watched her grow and blossom. And she is now Dr. Lauren Cook. She is a licensed clinical psychologist. She just recently had a baby and just has this beautiful life that she's created for herself. And she has a new book out that I think is so high value. If you struggle with anxiety, if you know somebody that does, if you have a college student age or, you know, even a little bit older, like Gen Z, Gen Y even, or millennials that are struggling with anxiety, this book is for you and for them. So let me give the formal introduction, but I just want to say how excited I am to have her on the show today. It feels so full circle. When I heard that she wrote this book and it was coming out, I was like, I need to have you on the show. This is such an important topic. Love the beautiful work that she is doing in the world. So with that, Dr. Lauren Cook is a licensed clinical psychologist, company consultant, author, and speaker. 
With a doctorate in clinical psychology and her master's in marriage and family therapy, Dr. Lauren integrates evidence-based tools from a systems lens, and she speaks internationally, both in person and virtually. Dr. Lauren owns a private practice, Hardship Psychological Services, and she is the author of a brand new book, Generation Anxiety. So with that, enjoy this great conversation. Hi, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Christy. I'm so excited for this conversation. You and I go way back. So this is extra special for me today. Yes, yes. In fact, in the intro, I just shared with everybody how we met. And it's just so amazing to stay connected for all this time with people that are doing such great work in the world. Oh my goodness. I know you are doing incredible work in the world. So I have admired you for such a long time. And and I'm just so glad we've stayed in touch. Thank you so much. Well, you are just rising to every occasion lately with all that you've been doing. And I wanted to have you on to chat about the topic of your new book, Generation Anxiety. Now, I know that you, for the most part, you specialize in your book is specialized for Gen Z and millennials who are two of two generations that struggle with anxiety more than any others in history. I would love to add Gen X to that too. I think millennials, Gen Z and Gen X, like with all that has changed in the last 20 or 30 years in our society, it is a lot, right? And I've struggled with anxiety in my life. I talked about it in my book as well, but I do believe like it took me When I was the age of millennials and Gen Zs, I didn't know how to deal with that. I needed guidance that I never could find. And so I think it's amazing that you've written a book just for those generations, because that's really when you're trying to navigate these things in life, right? So tell me a little bit about that inspiration and and your why behind writing this book. Yeah, it's it's true. You know, more and more people are struggling with things. And we're seeing it go vertically and horizontally. And what I mean by that is the prevalence is increasing, more and more people are struggling, and the severity of symptoms is increasing. So not only is it more common, it's more intense too. And what I talk about in the book, you know, you look at research from the Generational Power Index, for example, previous generations, you know, the silent generation, baby boomers, Gen X, millennials, they will all tell you the most significant generational event in their lifetime, you're probably thinking this, is September 11th. But then when you look at what's happened just in Gen Z short lifetime, there have been so many things. I mean, there's been so many shootings, for example, within their lifetime, the pandemic. I could go on and on, right? And, and people should read the book if they want to see that list there, right? But really, we have had just so many things going on in the last 10, 15 years that have greatly impacted people's mental health and can really make them feel one, helpless and two, hopeless. And you put those two things together that makes people feel anxious. And over time that can make people feel depressed, right? So I really wanted to give people the tools to feel better in their life when these things are happening that can really feel out of control. And the key thing I talk about, we can talk more about this, is this idea of empowered acceptance for how to approach this. I think it's a really helpful framework for how to navigate these things that understandably are causing people a lot of stress. You're so right about all of this. And it's so funny when you started to list off some of the things I was like, oh my gosh, it's so true. Like if we just make a list of everything we've all been through, especially the younger generations, it just the list will cause anxiety. (laughs) You know, you're so right. So let's talk about this framework because I think it's frameworks, by the way, are so key. If everybody could just find a few frameworks to keep in their pocket to help them with things that they're working through in their life, things could be so much different for the world. So let's talk about this framework. Absolutely. So this idea of empowered acceptance, it kind of really works in two key ways, one on the individual level and two on the collective level, right? Because many of us are experiencing anxiety individually, right? We have our family dynamics. We may have our own, you know, physical symptoms of anxiety with panic attacks, for example, or social anxiety. And then we have this collective anxiety too, of what's going on in the world and how that affects our nervous system. So we want to incorporate empowered acceptance and here's how it works. One, we have to accept that we feel anxious, which is very counterintuitive for people. Like, what do you mean 
supposed to accept my anxiety? Aren't I supposed to make it go away? Right. Aren't I, aren't I supposed to fight this and struggle with it and push it away? Right. <laughs> yes. But the more we do that, the more it actually exacerbates our anxiety because we get so freaked out. The anxiety is not going away. Right. So we have to then say, you know what? I accept that I feel anxious. I accept that this isn't comfy for me. And I still choose to live my life in a way that feels most in accordance with my values. And the second piece of this is we have to accept what's going on in the world. We can't just, you know, put our head in the sand and say, ah, la la la, I'm going to ignore what's happening. When we push the problems away, we're a passive bystander to those problems. And it only perpetuates the anxiety more. So first we have to accept And then the second piece, we have to be empowered in our approach. I'm a big behaviorist as a psychologist. Personally, I don't think positive thinking and manifesting are enough. It's it's a helpful starter fire, but you have to actually be willing to take action because the brain buys in and says, oh, maybe you can do something about this, right? You can't think yourself into training for a half marathon. You got to put your shoes on and actually take the steps. So if you or you yourself are struggling with anxiety listening to this, I want you to take steps to actually treat that anxiety, right? And I want you to take steps to be an active community member. If there are things scaring you in this world, what are some things that you can do to be a part of the solution rather than just sit on the sidelines? And that's going to help alleviate that anxiety for you as well. So it's acceptance and it's still being empowered in our life too. I love that. I love that. And I love what you said at the end about looking to see what you can do to be of help, because I have found throughout my life that when situations get very difficult or sad or heavy, the best thing to lift myself up is to look how I can lift up others and how I can be of help in some way. (laughs) That is so key. It is. And, you know, I have a bit of a controversial line in the book, but I think it's (laughs) true that anxiety makes us selfish. And it's never something that we do intentionally, right? But anxiety pulls us so into ourselves and our own experience that we don't then look up and see how other people are hurting. And like you said, if there's one way that we can pull ourselves out of our own distress, it's being that helping hand to someone else. But our anxiety wants to pull us down. So we've got to push out of that and say, okay, what can I do to help the person next to me who's struggling and not just sit in my own experience of this? Yes. Oh, this is so good. And we're so aligned when it comes to talking about how positive thinking is not enough, right? And just being positive. Yes, mindset is so much. It's such a big part of overcoming obstacles or achieving goals in our life or managing anxiety, but there has to be action to go with the mindsets. And the same thing with happiness. You know, I always say happiness isn't something you find like a penny on the ground, right? It actually comes with action. And it it is so true when it comes to managing anything and it calming our nervous system, reducing anxiety, all of it. So I love that you talk about this. So for our listeners and the Gen Zers and millennials, and we have people listening to that are parents to Gen Zers, right? And so it's so important because as Gen Xers, understanding our own anxiety can help, I think, us with our kids and nieces and nephews, right? So when it comes to taking action, do you have a tip or two of where people can start with the action part of of healing this or working through it? Yes, absolutely. And I should note too, I have a whole chapter in the book about helping our loved ones who struggle with anxiety. So if we have Gen Xers listening in who are like, oh, my college you know, student, my college kid is having such a hard time. How do I help them? Read that chapter of the book. It will definitely help because a lot of us unknowingly actually enable anxiety for our young adults today. So yes. we can talk more about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But to answer your question there, I'm a huge advocate of holistic healing. And, and really what that means is healing the entire body, not just from the neck up. You know, a lot of us, we take a very cognitive approach to our anxiety, which is very important. But anxiety is so somatic, right? There's a reason that 60%, there's a correlation between IBS, for example, and generalized anxiety. So we need to look at this holistically. So a few different things I'll say here. One get your blood work done. So many people miss this in healing their anxiety. Yes, thank you. Right? And the mm-hmm. body is trying to give us valuable data in our blood work. So check yes. it out. And also 
start to get curious about the gut brain access connection. You know, I have so many clients that feel extra nauseous in the morning. They actually throw up. Shocker, cortisol is highest in the morning. And so we really want to start to work to heal our gut and look at the foods that we're eating that are inflammatory. People may not love to hear this, but even look at how alcohol and sugar are very inflammatory in our gut and is leading to this increased cortisol in our body. It's affecting our gut flora health and in turn affecting our anxiety. So, you know, yes, therapy, medication can be very helpful tools for people. But I also think we have to look at other avenues of care, like what we're eating, drinking, and making sure we're exercising too. Oh, I love that you talk about this because I'm such a believer in that mind-body connection. And I think for too long as a society, we've overlooked the physical connection to anxiety, to depression, the physical causes. You know, I can tell you the blood work. I'm the first one to say, everybody listen to Dr. Cook, go get your blood work done because the information you can get is amazing. Several years ago, I was struggling with fatigue, chronic fatigue and extra anxiety. I went to the doctor, had my blood work done and he told me, you know, you're a little low in vitamin D and you could probably benefit from a B complex. And I was like, really? Okay, no one's ever said that to me before. Lo and behold, that's all it took. And I felt like a new person. (laughs) This is what I'm talking about. Exactly. Yes, it was wonderful information. And just sometimes these little things, and then you're like, wow, it wasn't all in my head. There's actually physical connections for some of this. And that feels really good to recognize the holistic side of it. So I love that you talk about that. Oh, good. Me too. I Yeah, because I would struggle with panic attacks for so long. And same thing. I started working with a naturopath. I will swear by Dr. Norris all day, every day. <laughs> and that healed the panic attacks for me, you know, and I could have done talk therapy for years about that. And obviously, I'm a huge advocate for talk therapy. I'm a therapist, right? But sometimes it really is something going on in our body. And we have to, we have to look at that in the picture. And that is so key. And the fact that you look at everything holistically is so beautiful. This is the new, a new day for therapy, for psychologists, for anyone who works in this space, for coaches, because I really think there's a whole effort across the board to look at things holistically now, which didn't used to be. It's it's actually a magical time. <laughs> I so agree. And it's something I'm really pushing for within my field, because quite frankly, in my six plus years of master's and doctoral training, not one single class on somatic body work or the gut brain axis connection, I know. So I really think this is something that we need to be, you know, including in our field. And even if there's not as much evidence-based data for this yet, we have to take a client-centered approach. And I invite people tuning in get curious about what's going to be helpful for you. I have a whole section in the book with over a hundred different modalities of healing, right? Whether it's acupuncture, whether it's the chiropractor, like get curious about what could work for you because it's not a one size fits all approach. Oh, it's so true. Well, I know we have to wrap this up that you've got a keynote today and other great things happening. So quickly, what is one thing you would like to say to everybody listening who's struggling with anxiety? And then where can our listeners find you and connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So really ask yourself, you know, when I get to the end of my life, when hopefully you're in your 80s or 90s, 100s, what do you want to end your life looking at? Do you want to feel like you live that fulfilling full life? Or at this point in your life, are you noticing I would have regrets? You know, I had to face that recently myself when I realized, you know what, I would regret getting to the end of my life and not letting myself have children, for example, because my anxiety was stopping me from that. And if you hear yourself saying, I'm not ready yet, or I need a little more time, that's probably your anxiety talking. You're never going to be fully ready. And so saying to yourself, I choose to do it anyway, even with the anxiety, right? That is when you get liberation from your anxiety. So don't wait for the anxiety to stop. It's not going to, sorry to burst that bubble but it's still choosing to live the life of your dreams and anxiety is going to be long for the ride and that's okay. You can handle the discomfort of that. Do not let avoidance be your answer. (laughs) Apathy is not your solution either. You have to take active and part acceptance. And so I hope people listening today will hear that and feel like they can take those bold steps forward. And for people wanting to connect with me more on this, I'm at Dr. Lauren Cook. 
I speak with companies and universities a lot about this. And obviously, I'd love if people got a copy of Generation Anxiety or you can listen to it as well. And connect with me on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Lauren Cook. I love it. That's so empowering too. I love that you're basically saying start before you're ready because if you wait until you're ready, it's not going to happen, right? And don't let anxiety and all of these things hold you back from doing what your soul wants to do and what you really want to do in your life. That's so beautiful. Well, I encourage everybody to connect with Dr. Lauren Cook. She is a superstar over on the socials and offers some wonderful advice and content over there. And grab a copy of her book, Generation Anxiety. And it is written for Gen Zers and millennials, but really I think can benefit everybody, especially if you're a Gen Xer who has struggled with anxiety or who has a son or daughter struggling with it as well. So thank you so much for being with us. I really am so happy to see you and grateful. Oh, the feeling is mutual, Christy. It's great to talk to you. (laughs) Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. That was such a great conversation. Was so happy to have her on the show. I hope you got a couple of little takeaways from that. And I'm going to put links to find and connect with Dr. Lauren in the show notes, but you can find her at drlaurencook.com. And of course, you can find her book, Generation Anxiety, on all of the online platforms, including Amazon. And I encourage you to go follow her over on social. TikTok, Instagram are her two big ones. And she just does so many great little tips and nuggets over there and is such a bright light. So I was so grateful to have her join us today. So thank you so much. And with that, that takes us to the section of the show called the Joy School Habits, where I share a quick actionable habit that doesn't take a lot, but can have big payoff. So I want to chat just for a minute about creating the habit of regularly tuning into and evaluating the rest that we need. Because it is so easy when we're going after something or when we're so overwhelmed in our life with family or business or trying to get accomplishments done, right, that we neglect our rest. And I know that so many of you struggle with sleep. I do too on occasion, but also just rest. Our minds, our brains were not made for this much overwhelm that we have today in this society with everything coming at us electronically and in the entertainment world. You know, we used to have like 10 channels. Now there's like thousands. All of the information coming at us, email, all of it really creates a lot of additional overwhelm and fatigue. And so many of us are actually running on fumes all the time or a lot of the time without even realizing it. And so really creating the habit of tuning into, are we getting enough rest? Do we need more? Do we need open space an afternoon, a walk in nature, something to clear our mind and our soul? Do we need to take a yoga class? Do we need to sleep in on a weekday? Do we need to create space for that? And, you know, some of you might think, well, I can't sleep in on a weekday. Well, If you really need it, look into a way that you can create a mental health day for yourself. Whatever you might need, looking into what your soul and your body needs as far as rest, not only will help you live a higher quality life, but also a lot of people don't realize and a lot of corporate companies don't realize this, that rest is actually part of being productive. I believe, especially if you're a business owner, that rest, proper rest and space to just be and breathe and think creatively is such a big part of increasing productivity and therefore revenue. And when you shift to view it like that, it really can open things up. And so I like to carve out time every single Sunday to stay away from screens. I just give myself open space to do laundry or go for a walk in nature or do some yoga or just veg on the couch if that's what I feel like I need to do. And regularly tuning into yourself and just looking at your state of being and your energy and asking yourself, am I getting enough rest? Do I need some mental rest? Do I need physical rest? Do I need some breathing space? And then carving out a way to honor that and then doing that on a regular basis is a beautiful habit and part of supporting our joy and becoming the best and most happiest versions of ourselves. And when we are the most joyful 
joyful and the happiest versions of ourselves. We are a brighter light for everybody in our life. We're more productive and we're able to really be there on a higher quality level for everybody that we're trying to be there for, right? And so just create that little habit. Maybe you can keep a journal on it or just take a few minutes a couple of times a week when you feel it's needed and really tune in mindfully to the quality of rest that you're getting, both sleep and maybe how you can support yourself there in different ways and also just mental rest, time away. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a vacation. Although last season, I did a whole episode on why it's important to take vacations. So if you missed that, you might want to tune in. There might be some inspiration there. But really, just like I said, allowing yourself space, binge Netflix or veg on the couch, whatever it is, you don't have to earn rest. It doesn't have to be something that you only get when you're done with whatever task is on your plate. Rest is an important part of completing those tasks and of living and creating your happiest, most joyful, most successful life. All right, my friends, with that, if you enjoyed this episode, I would be so grateful if you would leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. This really helps the show reach more people who might enjoy it. And I read them all and I love connecting with you. Or leave a review on your favorite platform wherever you listen to the show. It all helps. And please share with your friends on social media or take a screenshot of the show and text it to them and say, tune into this episode. I think you'd love it. And be sure to connect with me over on Facebook and Instagram. I do run my own platforms and I love connecting with you over there. You can visit my website at christylingspencer.com where you can get access to my new free masterclass, 11 Habits of the Happiest People. And you can find some other supportive resources for you there as well. And be sure to visit jointhejoyschool.com for all the details on my brand new membership program, Coaching Membership. It goes into depth on all of the things we talk about here on the podcast and then some. And I am so proud of how it's turned out and I want to give a shout out to all of the founding members. So that is jointhejoyschool.com for all the details. And there's a video for you there as well that I created all about it. So thank you so much for being here. And remember, you've got what it takes to create more amazing days and more amazing days make up a pretty amazing life. Sending you so much love. Have a fantastic week, my friends, and I will be back with you soon. Cheers. Cheers.